you all again for braving the rain for today's Tech Tuesday. I like this topic and have thought about it for a while, but I do not claim to be an expert. I've, I've read a lot about it, and I've, I've helped people a little bit with it, but I am not there yet. So I have asked Katharina and Jan to come because they, they approach the paperless office much better than I do. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about some of the technology and some of the process of setting up a paper, paperless office, or rather moving towards a paperless office. Um, this is a, a great image from a government building that, where the, the structure of the building has been weakened because of the amount of paper that they're keeping. And imagine how, how clean the office, I mean, maybe they like that because it's you know, more private. They can walk among the files and nobody will see anybody, but that's a lot to deal with, I think. So there's basically two steps in creating your paperless office. First, you have to have a plan, um, and that plan has to have several components to it. Uh, first of all, you have to have an idea of how you'll back up your paperless files. Um, are you going to have those just live on your computer? Do you have an external hard drive? Do you have a network drive? Do you have a cloud drive? Uh, security. Uh, what kinds of paper do you have? Do you have social security numbers? Do you have birth dates and uh, medical information? If you have those, you're going to need to make sure that your files are backed up. Just like here on campus, we have locked offices. How are you going to secure those files? Um, a big one with security, if you do have social for us especially here on campus, if we have student records that have social security numbers attached, we probably shouldn't be using cloud-based storage for them. So it's very important to keep security in mind when you're looking at these things. Uh, paper storage and re retention strategies. Uh, does anybody happen to remember how long we have to keep all those credit card statements and receipts? Seven years. Seven years? So just think, if you started today, you could finally start throwing those things away in seven years. I've only been here seven years. Um, thankfully, I haven't bought something every month, otherwise I'd have a big file drawer so far. Um, next, you have to think about scanning. How are you going to get your paper stuff that you get handed into the computer? And there's a lot of cool solutions for that, which we'll talk about a little. Uh, next, calendar. How many of you actually carry around a paper calendar? Please, please, please. Paper calendar. Nobody? You guys all deserve another piece of chocolate. <laughs> Try to pass that guy around. I, I can't. I, I know computer science students who actually have a paper calendar, and it always amazes me. So, so you know computer science, you know security, and you know like stuff is backed up, and you can get it in the cloud and synced to your phone and your your refrigerator and your computer but you're, it's on paper where you can lose it. Um, one student I know who is proficient at, at computer and smartphone usage had to send out an email saying, hey, I lost my calendar. Has anybody seen it? It's, it's red. Um, so syncing your calendar so that you don't have to carry around a paper calendar or have paper notifications. Um, digital documents. How many of you uh, have ever been online? <laughs> How many of you have found something you wanted to keep online and printed it? Okay, see, still a lot of people. There you go. Um, how many of you collaborate with other people on documents where you end up passing a piece of paper or a stack of paper around? There you go. A big consideration in uh, going paperless is dealing with email, websites that you want to save, and collaboration. So you, when you when you think about going paperless, you have to plan for all of these things. And next, after you've planned, you finally need to start practicing. Uh, so in order to have a good paperless office practice, you will need some equipment. Now, fortunately, we are at CC, so we already have a lot of this going on. The scanner. How many of you came down the south side of the stairs as you were coming in? Nice. Did you, you south side of the stairs? What was what was right underneath the stairs? Okay, that's the that's the north side. <laughs> okay, great. The south side of these stairs right here. 
It's a scanner printer. Oh. And one of the that that anybody can use. And so you can, and it's got one of the cool automatic document feeders. So if you have a stack of eight and a half by 11s that are, have stuff on them, you can just feed those into that guy and it will scan them either to email or to USB. So here on campus, we are blessed in that you probably don't need to get a scanner. There are scanners in every building. Go ahead, Jan. How secure are those scanners? Do they store the images? You know, I don't know. And that's a very good. To store the images, yeah, so yeah. Really That's a great question, and I will ask uh, to find out. Because I know the Xerox machines often have document storage on them. It's like a cache, but I don't know about the HPs. Uh, let me write that down. Campus scanners uh, in device storage. I like image retention, too. That sounds cooler. <laughs> um, but that's a very good point. Uh, it's something you have to think about. If you're scanning medical records, if you're trying to store medical records, or social security numbers are the ones that I think about, or uh, how, how should I say this? Um, identity theftable stuff, then you have to, you have to be worried about that. Um, and it could be that, now that I'm thinking about it, with our new ISO, our new information security officer, Maybe we will start implement. Maybe we'll implement a policy of clearing the public scan device caches uh, periodically, once a block, once a year, or something like that. Yikes! So definitely something to keep in mind. But there are alternatives, of course, to our other scanners. Um, I like the magic wand scanner. You can get them about this big, and they just store directly onto a, an SD card that you could plug into your computer. Um, I've even seen, or I've heard of ones that are magic wands where they're wireless, and so they'll, they'll transmit the thing directly to a folder on your computer. So magic wand scanner. Next, a shredder. It's just fun to have a shredder. Because once you get that piece of paper and you've scanned it, shred it. So you don't, you're not tempted to keep it. And so you just get rid of it. Next, you need some OCR. Can anybody tell me what OCR stands for? Optical character. You get another, where's the chocolate? Yes. Give her another chocolate. Give her a piece of chocolate. Um, so optical character recognition. That's making it so your document can be searched. Um, this is very important in, in, uh, in Jan's world um, for the students. And it's also, I think, important for anybody who wants to keep documents on their computer and find them easily later. How many of you uh, have, okay, how many of you actually, when you look for something on your computer, you actually navigate folder structures? Great, good job, nice. excellent, nice, nice. How many of you also search? Nice, also pretty much everybody as well. <laughs> search is the new organization. You should do both, though, I think. You should have a good, solid folder structure, so nested folders where you've got a folder inside a folder that makes sense. But if you have it OCR'd, you'll be able to find it so much easier because you'll also be able to search it and come up with multiple instances of it. <laughs> and if you have OCD, you don't have to worry. That's right, Katharina. <laughs> Uh, I'll just hide that little part of the, the R there, OCD. Um, that's a great question. Probably, no, actually, step back. Uh, Microsoft Word has a snap-in component up until this latest version that is the imaging for Word or scanning and imaging for Word, which supposedly has OCR built in. Supposedly. I have yet to be able to find that when I'm looking for it. Um, because that's the case, one of the neat features, or I'm really thankful that we went with some Xerox machines, because that's the case, because you don't, I can't find that component of Word, our Xerox machine scanners, they actually have a feature built in where they will scan and OCR your PDF if you tell it to. So that, that's one way to do it. Another great way to do it um, is uh, we have a five licenses for Abbey Fine Reader on campus. Abbey Fine Reader is a, a Russian, or Abbey is a Russian company that has probably the world's best 
optical character recognition software, Adobe, if you buy Adobe Acrobat, they actually license the engine for OCR from Abbey. I think that's amazing. This big company, they say, we're not going to even bother with this. Just give us your stuff and we'll give you lots of money. So Abbey Fine Reader has it. Um, uh, lots and lots of, uh, of apps for your smartphone. If you look up uh, a scanner for your smartphone, a scanner app, um, if you look up OCR with that, it should OCR recognize your documents so that you can search them and copy paste from them. So OCR is also very important, uh, and that's where we get into the smartphone and app. Let's say you're on the road. Uh, how many of you have taken a trip for the college and gotten a receipt? My favorite thing in the world. Okay, that's really extreme. One of my, one of the things I love is having a scanning app so that I don't have to worry about losing the receipt. Because right there, and while I'm at the table in the restaurant eating my meal, I can take a picture of the receipt and even OCR it if I need to, and then email it to myself so that I'll be sure to have that, even if I were to lose all my luggage. Do you then have to print that out and store it with your card? You no, you can upload it. Okay. I kind of want to just put my, my recording on pause here because, ahem, <laughs> no, I do not print it out. I am one of the guys who I just keep the, keep the stuff, and I have a, I actually, this is, this is the one area I'm actually proud of for my paperlessness. I actually have all of my receipts for the last, I think, three or four years organized and backed up in a cloud s storage solution, and th they're organized by year and by month and, and by name so that I can find my receipts when it comes time to be audited um, for my P-card. So I'm, th I'm moving towards paperless. The P-card application does all of that for you. I don't trust the P-Card application. <laughs> I mean, I have, I do upload my, my images, my receipt images, um, and they do keep them organized, but until the P-Card date comes around, and for some reason, when I, when I have been audited, they, they ask for me to provide them, even though I've uploaded them to the, to the system. I don't know why. You're still keeping your paper receipts. So I still have all the paper receipts. But some receipts aren't actually generated on paper. When you buy an airplane ticket, how many of you have gotten a paper receipt for an airplane ticket? Well, okay. Really? I don't have a fancy phone. Yeah. When, when did a paper receipt for an airplane ticket? When you buy it online, they usually just email it. Oh, you don't yeah, have that, I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh, boarding pass. Okay, great, Sorry. great. Okay, yeah. So the boarding pass is another thing. I, yeah. It's always, a, I think it's always a good idea to also have the well, paper boarding pass. A lot of vendors the, now are offering. Yeah. To email your receipt. Yeah. Or yeah. And or e text it to you or you know, whatever, so you, you can avoid that paper thing in the first place. That's what I do. And that's that's when it's a good idea to save that uh, paper receipt as a PDF, which you can do on any computer nowadays, Mac or PC. And if you don't know how, I'm happy to show you how. Anytime. Like almost anytime. Um, but the, and it's one of his other favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of favorite things. Go ahead, Jim. Well, iPhones anyway has Passbook, which is a nice way to store the, the boarding pass. Those of us who have the newer iPhone, I don't <laughs> have the newer iPhone. Um, I've although, never used it. although even I've with my dumb phone that could receive the the MMS messages, I actually, just because I was a, a geek or am a geek, I actually had my boarding pass on my dumb phone. It was a flip phone with a tiny little screen. What uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I know, but I had it there. It was on the phone. It was on the dumb phone. So. I had Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's that's a good substitute, Jim or a dumb phone. Jim is more resourceful, better looking than a dumb phone. Jim's battery life is a little bit longer. Than <laughs> the final thing you you need to think about is uh, is your storage space. Um, do you have an external hard drive to put these things on? Uh, it's not like you're going to run out of, on, of storage space for your, your paperless documents soon, but you do have to think about it, um, whether that's an external hard drive, your, your computer hard drive, and how you're going to back that stuff up. And then the steps, when you first start, if you want to kind of do a Control-Alt-Delete or a, a restart or a reboot on your, your office system, you can start by sifting and sorting. Um, and one of, the, 
one person I heard of who, who went to a paper-free office, when they started sifting and sorting, it took two full afternoons, and they had 100 pounds of paper that they had stored and built up over the years. And when they were done, they had less than a quarter of that left because they just said, I don't need this anymore, I don't need this anymore, I don't need this, and they, they just purged pretty much everything. That, well, all but a quarter, about a quarter. And then and you recycle that stuff, and then you can start scanning your stuff a, a little bit at a time if you want. And then from then on, every time you receive a piece of paper, scan it, store it away and file it, and then shred it. Okay? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's in the back of the library, there's actually a bin where if you don't want to shred it, you can throw the stuff into the bin, and they shred it and pick it up, I think, once or twice a month. Um, but I know that there are also shredders elsewhere on campus. Well, I know my, the, co the company that we use for recycling won't take shredded. Right? Like your home company won't take shredded? Wow. Which is really interesting because I think shredded paper is actually closer to what they want to get it to anyway. It's got to do with handling it. It's messy. Oh, and yeah, that's true. And you can't put it in a bag. Although I tried putting it in a paper bag, which makes sense to me. But, yeah. You know. Yep, they don't like it. Wow. Let me boycott that company. What's the name of that? <laughs> um, okay, so scan immediately. That's really weird that the company doesn't well, take no, shredded. That's, you know, single string. Sure. Well, oh, single stream here too. So that's yeah, that's I'm true. Wondering. I wonder if the company that handles our shredding is taking care of the recycling end of it. Yeah, you know that. Totally separate. That that makes me wonder if if our uh, if our shredded paper is even making it into recycling, or if it's just getting thrown away. But I bet you that shredded paper biodegrades a lot better than regular paper. Well, I started when my husband told me we couldn't recycle it. I said, "Okay, we're burning it." And then Which I said, is also a form of recycling. It's a lot easier to burn if it just crumple it up and throw it in the fire. But it burns place. so much better if it's shredded. Because there's so much more air in there. Inger? The bin for shredding in the library sits in the back of the library. Yeah, it's in the back by the employees' exit. Oh. Um, so if you really want to, I would be willing to take your paper if you come and stop by and say hi to me. To take your thing to the thing. Yeah, it's a lockable thing. Yeah. And we have one, the finance department has one. Do you have one in your office too, or do you use the finance too? Yeah, yeah that, that's nice and sustainable. I had never even seen the one by the bookstore. I'm going to walk out today and look at that one. Oh, <laughs> so we're shredding because there's confidential information in there. Putting stuff on thumb drives that's confidential is kind of risky as well. Information security is another <laughs> another okay. Tuesday for Sorry. next year and also uh, it's going to be part of Excel at CC next year. So you're all invited to take part in that. So um, we have resources that you can look at. There is a lynda.com course on going paperless. Um, there's also a book by Don Aslett called Clutter's Last Stand. That's the short that's available through PPLD. I believe it is available actually through PPLD as available as an e-book if you want to avoid getting a book. Uh, also, the, the Tut Library actually has a video uh, on paperless. It's called paperless, but it goes through the history of paper and part of the video, one of the sections towards the end, is on going paperless. Uh, the Clutter's Last Stand, the, the Don Aslett who made this book, who wrote this book, has a section on going paper free. And interestingly enough, Don Aslett also has a museum in Idaho on cleaning, where if you go to the museum, you can actually have your kids run a vacuum and wash the windows and stuff like that. Lots of fun cleaning activities. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jan, Katharina, would you like to, would you mind sharing a few words about your paperless journey and, and how you accomplished that? Uh, you can go first. <laughs> so I'm not completely paperless. You can go first. <laughs> so I'm not completely paperless yet, but will be, I think, by the end of the summer. 
Um, so my last project for one paperless is exactly what Weston was talking about, where the things I've collected in 25 years of doing this particular job um, and going through and um, getting rid of the stuff that is superfluous. So when I, ha I have old documents on the ADA and 504, those will all be recycled because every bit of it's online. Um, so I still have a drawer of that kind of paper. And I have, we had a settlement agreement with the Department of Justice and I still have paper related to that. And I have a few odds and ends, but I can do my entire job except for meeting with students remotely um, by accessing my computer remotely. And because everything is right there. Um, but it took about three years to phase into that. Um, and uh, so Weston helped me um, and Chad set up um, a file system on a secure drive because security is truly important. So I have a secure drive that is as secure as the counseling center's drive. And um, so we started by just scanning student records um, year by year and gradually phasing in so that over, you know, like every first year student three years ago, we did everything electronically and then the next year and, you know, and then we had one class of information, one, one um, group of students' information that we had to actually scan. Um, <laughs> and it was tedious. It takes time. So I have my own scanner in my office and um, it's rare that a student gives me anything in paper anymore, but if they do, I quickly scan it and hand back the document to them. Um, and that way I don't have to store any paper. So I have absolutely no paper records in my office. I do have, because of the seven year rule, um, I do have old files that are paper files in storage. Um, but each, I think, within six years, I think we, maybe five years, I think I'll have no more paper files for students. Yeah. I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> but it's been, you know, an interesting um, thing to do. I spend much, much more time in front of a computer. And I think it probably looks when people come to my office, I've got a lot to do or a lot going on, and I'm just always sitting in front of a computer. <laughs> but I'm always in front of a computer because that's where everything is. So if someone's not happy sitting looking at a computer screen that number of hours a day, would prefer to be writing in a file or a paper or something, you know, it's something they have to think about. Um, I'm pretty digital at home as well, so I have probably only purchased two, two hard copy books in the past several years. So I do all my digital books. Uh, I don't have a lot of books in my office because I don't buy books for the office anymore. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty paperless. I'm getting there. I hope by the end of the summer it'll be even more so that I'm going to have a very bare office. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Jan. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I liked about that we first talked about with, with Jan is faxes. For, for years now, you've been able, if you have a modem in your computer, you can actually receive a fax directly into your computer, which I think is really cool. And so we set that up for Jan as part of this process. And, and it's just, I just love that idea because you don't have to, it doesn't have to print anywhere. It just goes straight into the computer and you don't even have to have to touch something in order for you to have that faxes. Well, what was really cool is Weston then installed a program where it converts it to a PDF for me. And so I can save the PDFs of anything that's faxed to me in the yep. student file. So pretty cool yeah, stuff. Really is cool. Katharina, do you want to say a word or two about your system? So I used to, and I still do kind of take a lot of notes, because once I write something down, then I remember it. So I kind of don't go back in my notes very often. But when I do, I can kind of remember where it was. But um, I started. When I got the iPad here at work, I started using um, Google Apps to take notes. And we have OneDrive, which is the Microsoft version, but the Google Docs I like because they're on my computer, there's an app on the iPad, it works on my phone, so even if I'm just walking to lunch and somebody stops me, I can pull something up and take a note. Um, with that, of course, was like setting up the folders and stuff. Um, I would just like, for a project, so for like, you know, accessibility resources when we were looking at applications. I set up a folder for that. I had one file where I take notes and anything else that I got I would scan and save there. Um, and then the notes 
I just put a date and a bulleted list of notes, and then the next time I take notes on that, I put it in the same file, but at the top, and so it becomes a long file. Um, so I have a bunch of folders like that. Um, the one thing that I've learned is that I need a temp notes file because I will randomly go to a meeting or something that I'm not prepared for, and so I take notes in that one file, and then I, I can move it out later and put it into the organization structure. Um, another thing, I started doing a to-do list in there as well, but I recently moved that to Workflowy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Workflowy. It's for, it's like, um, it's like a bulleted list and you can complete items and save them and um, so it's good for to-do lists and, and that kind of stuff and I have half, I mean I have a page set up, it's expandable so every bullet can be a page and you can have some items under that and I have one for personal and one for work and I can do everything. Um, so that's where the to-do list is and now in Workflowy you can link from Workflowy you can use a link. You didn't used to be able to, so I actually link to the applicable Google document whenever I need to go back and Google. And you can also link to users of uh, Workflow. You can so share. You can, you can mm -hmm. share your to-do list or project mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. Is there an app for Workflow? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I share my Google Docs as needed with people around mm -hmm. the office. The one thing that I'll say on the information security front is I assume that anything that I put in Workflowy or Google Docs that somebody can have access to it. I assume it can get stolen. So I don't put anything um, that needs to be secure up there. But as soon as I get a piece of paper, I'll scan it and go save it in, in Google Docs somewhere. Yep. Thank you. But to make up for that, I have LastPass also, which is uh, for secure storage of passwords and secure notes and things like that. What's it called? Last Pass. Last Pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that has, I don't even know any of my passwords anymore. <laughs> Last Pass knows them all. But it also has secure notes. So anything that is not a password mm -hmm. on a website that has to be secure, I can, I can store it there. So Interesting. that's another one. I don't know. Thank you, Katharina. That's actually really helpful. Uh, just a note about Workflowy, if you think you want to sign up for Workflowy to give it a try, um, you can talk to somebody who has a Workflowy account and that will kick their numbers up so that, that it will give them more items that, you, that they can put into Workflowy and it will kick your numbers up so you can put even more. I think the starting limit for Workflowy is like, if you have a free account is like 250 items a month. But if you delete items instead of completing them, then you're reusing your same 250 over and over. Yeah, but, so that's 250 additional items per month. So at the end of three months, you could have 750 things. But if you get a referral from somebody or give somebody a referral, they give you, they give you 250 or 500 extra items, new items per month. Yeah, something like that. So it, it helps. I was just going to add one more thing. So I also use the Surface Pro um, that with, I can um, directly access the secure drive that I use for student notes. And I can open up the notes section where we track all of, we have to document all of our interactions with students. And I can handwrite on it and it recognizes my handwriting and converts it to text. So what now is in that word document is text. So I do that. The other thing that was really important is it, there were a lot of people that had to help me get to where I'm at. So, you know, Chad and Weston were there right at the very beginning. Katharina has helped. We're moving to um, a more sophisticated online system that Jim is helping us to implement. So I haven't done this by myself. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have great campus resources if you have questions about Awesome. Thank you, Jan. Are there any questions? Are you guys actually keeping this at home? Yeah, I used to file all of my receipts and bills that came in the mail and everything, and, and I moved one time, shredded it all, and <laughs> <laughs> so now I shred it as I get it. But um, I do have a file here where I have one file folder with a little bit of stuff in it, and if I get something that I think I'm going to need, but I don't want to scan it immediately, I stick it in there, and every time I put something in there, I flip through them, 
because I'll usually find something old and then I can throw it out. So it never gets any bigger. But very organized. <laughs> well, and I have my key card stuff printed out. Like that, I'm not gonna. If they want that in paper, they can have it. So, so you know, my budget stuff will be 100 percent paperless this next cycle. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, are, are there any other questions? All right, how many of you use Word or Excel? Hey, you're already starting to be paperless right there. You remember the old days? Okay, some of you remember the old days where you'd actually cut and paste paper words onto paper for cutting and pasting and rewriting and revising? I remember that. I did that in high school. Thank you very much for coming. If you have questions about going paperless or you want to make a couple steps towards going paperless, talk to me, talk to somebody in ITS, talk to Jan and Katharina for advice or help. Um, I think we're all happy to help people. <laughs> Thanks again for coming.